When most people are asked the question of what bicycle company do you think is the largest, they usually come up with giant, trek, or specialized. They wouldn't be totally incorrect if we were talking about the biggest brands in the world. But as far as an entire company goes, all three of them got overtaken by a behemoth a few years ago. If you would like to support the channel in any way, just hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment, share the video, all of that helps. Who would you think is the largest bicycle company in the world? You have the American behemoth out of Waterloo, Trek, one of the originators of the mountain bike craze and now owned 49% by Marita, specialized, and then there's giant bicycles. Being the leader in production with at one point in time producing upwards of 85% of the bikes sold globally. And then finally, we have Pawn Holdings. Now, if we're solely talking the bike industry, many of you have probably never heard of Pawn Holdings. Just listen to what they have on their list of brands that they own. Colloy, Cannondale, Cervelo, Derby Cycles, that's like the owner of Focus, GT, Gazelle, Iron Horse, Mongoose, Santa Cruz, Velaretti, Schwinn. There's more than that. The list goes on. And as a couple of years ago, they even bought one of the biggest bike chains on the west coast of the United States, Mike's Bikes. And whenever they purchased Mike's Bikes into Rail Industries a few years ago, I started to really kind of wonder, who is this Pawn Holdings? And they have a much more storied past than I realized. <laughs> We're going to mainly focus on when the bicycle portion of Pawn Holdings was formed, but it really does help to know some broad strokes of history with the Pawn family because the company is actually, to my surprise, still owned by the Pawns. You know, I just realized I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. Pawns is how I read it. Pawns, Pawns. We're going, we're going to go say Pons. Ben Pons Sr. was a Dutch businessman and owned the first dealership outside of Germany to sell Volkswagen. As the years grew, the Pawn dealership did as well. They started importing Porsches into the Netherlands. They partnered with Audi and eventually separated the dealership from the export business because of this growth. So now, at this point in history, Pawn had become a massive importer and exporter of vehicles based out of the Netherlands. Ben Pawn had a son who was also named Ben. You know, all Ben Jr., who in the early 80s incorporated the Pawn holdings that we know today. Ben Jr. was, to no shock of anyone, a race car driver, competing in a season of Formula One racing Le Mans races. I don't know why my brain fixated on it. This is the weirdest thing. And he was also actually in the Olympics for ski shooting. Now, we're going to fast forward a bit because this is where things start to get interesting. Pond Holdings is doing great, making a ton of money in the car business, and then in 1998, they decide to open Pond North America. But they still really aren't in the bicycle game. Then, it takes all the way until 2011 for them to buy one of their first bigger bike brands with Gazelle. After that, it looks like something lit a fire under Pond Holdings' rear end. In 2011, they take over importership of Cervelo. 2015, they acquired Santa Cruz Bicycles. 2021, they acquired Mike's Bikes. They also, in 2021, acquired Durrell Sports Cannondale. Uh, in 2022, they took over Velaretti. That is just in a 10-year span hitting the high points. Within that, they took over Derby, which is Focus, and a multitude of other brands. So in a 10-year span, they basically went from like 0% of their revenue came from the cycling industry to a whopping 40% of their revenue is from the bicycle industry. So what happened leading up to 2011 that made Pond really get into the bicycle business? Me personally, my best guess, being in and around the industry, uh, researching Pond as they are, knowing what happened around that 2010 timeframe, it's uh, specifically bicycles as transportation or e-bikes. I did a short video on electric bicycles, but around that 2010 mark was when we started seeing the first iterations of the current electric bicycle, and the e-bike boom really started to take hold then. And people in the Netherlands rely a lot less on cars and more on public transit and bicycles as their main mode of transportation, unlike us here in the US. So again, I wanna reiterate, within the family of Pond Holdings, the bicycle and e-bicycle business has already grown to 40% of what their traditional automotive division generates. 
That's huge. While Pawn has been a Volkswagen Group importer to the Netherlands for 75 years, their bike and e-bike operations started only in 2011. And they went from complete zero to 40% in essentially, let's just round to 10 years. And think about it, I looked up some statistics. 75% of Dutch people own a Pawn made bike. Four million Dutch cyclists use a Pawn bicycle daily. And one in five e-bikes in Germany is a Pawn brand. The technical term for what Pawn is essentially investing in is micro mobility. Essentially anything smaller than a car that is lightweight, like a scooter or a bicycle. And if you start to look at Pawn as a transportation company, not so much a sporting goods company, the acquisition of all these bike companies really start to make sense. So to recap, Ben Pawn Sr. His dad owned a business. It's kind of where this entrepreneurial ship started back in the 1800s. He did have bicycles at his shop. Then you have Ben Pond who really started the import and export of Volkswagen. He actually was one of the biggest, or not biggest, he was one of the first exporters of Volkswagen products to the United States. They branch off to where they're a car dealership and an export business. Uh, then the 80s hit, Ben Pawn Jr. makes Pawn Holdings. Um, and then in 2011, they decide to get into the bicycle business and that starts taking off. Because I think that they see over in the UK that uh, transportation like bicycles is a pretty big chunk of the market. Whereas here in the US, unless you live in some sort of major city like New York, you have to own a car to get around. Even where I live, the, the closest grocery uh, to get food at is, I don't know, eight miles, which I would do that on my bike all day long, but you're on public roads that have no shoulders or nowhere for you to ride your bike, so you're just at the mercy of people hopefully being nice enough not to run you over and kill you. So having a car is pretty essential here. <laughs> So now we are up to the current times. Let's have some speculations about what Pawn just did um, and how they are really upsetting the, the market, in my opinion. So if you really take a hard look at Pawn's automotive business, they essentially purchase dealer networks in the US to distribute the brands that they have. If you look into them, they did this with car dealerships in the US. Pawn's biggest acquisition, in my opinion, was the recent Durrell Industries, who owned the brand Cannondale. Cannondale is the fourth biggest brand in the U.S. Currently, there is about 6,300 mainline bike shops in the U.S., and 44% of those carry one or more of the top three brands. Giant, Trek, Specialized. If you know anything about the bike industry, most of your smaller bike shops will choose one of the big full line brands to have in their store while also carrying a smorgasbord of smaller brands that they they enjoy. This means Pawn has a fairly uphill battle to get into the local bike shop market and to compete with the top three. That's why I believe they purchased Mike's Bikes. Mike's Bikes was the biggest seller of specialized bikes in the US. And even though Pawn said they were not changing anything about those shops, Specialized pulled all their bikes out of those shops because of the acquisition. So wouldn't Pawn just insert brands that they already own into local businesses that they already own? I think Bicycle Retailer Magazine put it best. We have Pawn, which controls a powerful staple of bike brands that can't find enough premium retailers to sell their product. And Pawn has a business model of acquiring retailers to sell brands it represents. So seemingly, that would be what they are trying to do. They are trying to break out big into the US market and I haven't dealt with Pawn Holdings. The bike shop did carry Cannondale back in the day, but that has been a very long time ago. But I am here for what Pawn is doing. They are taking a very non-traditional route. Because the big three, you've got the two American brands, which is Specialized, you've got Trek, and then you've got the Taiwan Giant, Giant. <laughs> you know, Specialized and Trek started as bicycle companies. Giant started as a manufacturing company, and then you've got Pawn. Pawn started as an automotive importer and exporter, a, a transportation company. They weren't getting into bicycles because of the sport of cycling or mountain biking, or whatever you want to call it. It's, they are a transportation company. 
So I kind of like them coming in and upsetting the market and changing stuff. Because to me, when you have competitiveness within a market, that is the number one time for a consumer. You've got technology is gonna get better quicker because they're competing with each other. Prices are gonna get better because they're competing with each other. Customer service is gonna get better because I think times have started to change, especially after COVID where people were looking for the best deal and now they're looking towards customer service and a good deal, if that makes sense. I'm, I'm very curious what Pawn is gonna do, what their future holds. I'd love to actually talk to a couple bike shops that have worked with Pawn, get their input on it. That's where it is. So the, the biggest bicycle company over the last few years has been Pawn Holdings. Again, that is not brand. Brand is still, I think, in the US Trek, maybe. Um, I think Giant's third, uh, specializes second. That's what I got for you. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, I'm hoping to get to some uh, some bike shop videos. After after my Orbea video, had a ton of people say they want to see more of the inner workings of small business bike shops. I'm, I'm working on that for you guys. Uh, yeah, so I'll see you in the next one. Later.